Hello, and welcome to ICND1 Lab 1, titled Navigating a Router Switch Command Line Interface. If you're using the CCNA exam certification guides from Cisco Press, the best time to do this particular lab is after reading ICND1 books Chapter 8 or Chapter 13. Like all labs in this product, this lab begins with a list of objectives followed by some scenario steps. In this particular lab, by the time you're done, you should be better able to use iOS command line interface help features and describe the differences between user mode, enable mode, and configuration mode. You'll also be able to describe the differences between exec commands and config commands, and also move around between user mode, enable mode, and configuration mode. The scenario for this lab has two main steps. In the first step, you'll see a user getting in through the console into user mode and using command line interface help features to get help and use some basic commands. In the second step, you'll see that same user move from user mode to enable mode into configuration mode and navigate between the three modes and see some examples of different commands you can use in each mode. The network used here in lab one looks like the picture you see there. Three routers, four switches with some serial links between the routers. However, for our purposes, the only one that matters is router one. We're gonna have a PC that's connected via the console cable you see there into router one and we're just gonna use the command line interface on router one. So let's go ahead and begin step one. To reach user mode in a router, the user must either connect to the router through the console, or through an auxiliary port, or by telnetting into the router. Any of these three methods let the user reach user mode, so it's the first mode that a user sees on the command line interface on a router. From user mode, the user can type any harmless exec commands. First of all, they're harmless because you can't hurt the router, and they're called exec commands because the router takes the command and, quote, executes the command and spits back some command output to you. You know you're in user mode when you look at the command prompt and see a greater than sign. Before we see the command line interface, a couple of key points to take note of. First of all, anytime you need to get help, simply type the question mark, and that's likely a good place for which the router will give you some output that gives you some hints about what to do next. Also, you have some commands that have a lot of output. In fact, so much output it doesn't fit on one page. So when that happens, the router will put the word more at the bottom of the text. And then if you hit the space bar, iOS will give you several more lines. Or if you hit the enter key, it'll give you one more line. And we'll see an example of that coming up. Additionally, when you're tired of seeing the output of a particular command, if you press any key other than the enter key or space bar, iOS terminates the command. Next, let's take a look at the command line interface on a router. Here I'll be using a terminal emulator called TerraTerm. If you see the Help About TerraTerm window here, notice there's a website listed, www.ayera.com. If you go to that website, you can download a freeware version of the terminal emulator that I'm using to build these labs. Now, every terminal emulator has some serial settings that need to match the router or switch console port. Now, if you look at the serial settings for this particular emulator, it matches the router's default settings, which is to use 9600 bits per second, 8 bits of ASCII data, no parity, one stop bit, and no flow control. So this emulator is set up and ready to go. Now notice the screen is blank at this point. The router is waiting on me to do something. So if I press the enter key, notice I'll get a password prompt. Now this password prompt expects me to type in the console password. You can configure a password that's required of the user when they connect via the console, and that's been pre-configured. So I type in the password. Of course, the letters don't show up so that nobody can look over your shoulder and see the password. And now you're in user mode. Notice the prompt ends in a greater than sign, which means that you're in user mode. And the R1 part of the prompt simply lists the host name that's been pre-configured on this router. When in doubt, you can always press the question mark to get help. For instance, here, I just pressed the question mark. I didn't need to press the enter key afterwards. And after pressing the question mark, I got several lines of help. On the left, I see a list of commands, and on the right, I see a short explanation of the commands. Also notice near the bottom of the screen, there's the word more. That means the command has more output to tell me. If I press the enter key, I get one line at a time. So I press the enter key once here, now another time, and now another time, each time seeing one additional line of output. If I want to see a bunch more lines, I simply press the space bar, and we see a lot more lines of output. Now in this case, the help is finished, and it's waiting on me to type a command. So let's just say I typed the show interfaces command. Now once I type that and press enter, I get several lines of output, and once again I see more at the bottom of the screen. So I could press the space bar to get several more lines of output, the enter key to get one line, or I can press any other key besides the space bar or the enter key to terminate the command output. 
You can also get help for command parameters. For instance, you just saw the help that you get when you do a show space question mark, and you may have noticed the IP option. Now let's say you did show space IP, but you didn't know any of the options that followed that. Well, as you see here, if you do a show space IP space question mark, you get all the options that follow the parameter IP. So you could do that to get the different parameters. Notice there are a lot of options on the show IP command, so you see more at the bottom of the screen. So as usual, you can hit the space bar to get lots more lines, the enter key to get a single line, or any other character to terminate the command. Next, let's look at a different way to use the question mark. Notice I've typed show space IP space R, and now if I press a question mark without a space, what the router thinks is, oh, you want help about parameters for this command that start with R. Notice it lists six different words there, including the word route. So let's just say I was looking for the command show IP route. I could do show IP R question, see the route option, and be reminded that route is one of the options. Now before we go, there's another quick usability thing that's very useful for learning. Let's just say I typed show IP RO, and I think that that command is unique meaning that if I typed the enter key right now that the router should say oh RO is a valid abbreviation for the word route now I could do that and notice it is a valid abbreviation but if I didn't remember and I hit the tab key as I'm about to do now notice that the router said oh RO is a valid abbreviation let me hit the tab key and it spells out the rest of the command so it gives you a way to confirm your thinking that alright that is a valid abbreviation for a command next let's move on to step two in step two, we'll examine the three most important modes of the iOS command line interface, namely user mode, enable mode, and configuration mode. These modes allow the users to use different commands and do different things, so it's important that you move to the correct mode before you do the command that you need to do. Now to move between modes, you start out in user mode as we've talked about before, then to get into enable mode, you use the enable command. After using that command, the router typically prompts you for a password. When you type in the correct password, you're in enable mode and can do some different commands. Now, if you're tired of using enable mode, you can use the disable command to move from enable mode back to user mode. Quite frankly, most people don't bother, but you probably ought to know that for the test. Now, if you decide later you want to configure the router, tell it some new configuration parameter that tells the router how to operate, you can use the configure command while in enable mode and move down to config mode. In config mode, you can tell the router how to behave. When you're done doing that, you can use the end command or press the control Z sequence to move back to enable mode. While moving between the modes may be relatively simple, it's hard to really understand what these modes are for until you see lots of examples. Before we do that though, let's consider the types of commands you would use in each mode. There's two main styles of commands. One's called exec commands and one's called configuration commands. As you see here in the table, they've got some differences. First of all, exec commands are only used in user or enable mode, whereas configuration commands are only used in config mode. The main difference is the following. When you type an exec command, you expect iOS to give you some messages back. Typically, these commands display information about what the router is doing. Whereas config commands, you don't get any messages in return. However, exec commands typically do not tell the router how to behave. It doesn't tell it anything about how to route packets or what interfaces to use and that kind of thing. Whereas configuration commands can tell the router things like, do use this interface, don't use that one, use a particular IP address, use a particular routing protocol. So these configuration commands change the configuration or behavior or the router or switch. As you go through your CCNA studies, you'll see lots and lots of exec and configuration commands. This table shows three different commands that we'll use at step two. In particular, there's the show IP route command, and that's an exec command that's available both in user mode and enable mode. It's available in user mode because it cannot harm the operation of the router. We'll also look at the reload command, which is only available in enable mode. It's an exec command, but because it can harm the operation of the router because it can cause the router to reboot, it's only available in enable mode. Finally, we'll look at the hostname configuration command, which changes the router's configuration. So let's begin in user mode at the command line interface. Notice the prompt has a greater than sign reminding me I'm in user mode. Now if I type the enable command and press enter, notice the router gives me a password prompt. Here's where I type in the enable password. Note of course it does not show the actual text of the password when you're typing so nobody can look over your shoulder. And press enter, now you're in enable mode. I know I'm in enable mode because I've got a pound sign at the end of the prompt. Now if you're tired of that, you can just use the disable command as shown here, press enter, and now you're back to user mode. 
Next, take a look at the Show IP Route command. From user mode, it's accepted. The Show IP Route command can't hurt the router, so user mode is an appropriate place for that command. However, if we type the reload command, notice we get these messages. In fact, if you look closely, you can see this phrase that says, unknown command. That's the important part of this message. That's the router saying, hey, I don't know what the reload command is. Now, technically that's not true. What the router is really saying is, if you're in user mode, I'm going to act like I don't know what that command is because that command is not a valid user mode exec command. Now, if I move back to enable mode with the enable command and enable password, and now I try the reload command, notice the router reacts differently. In this case, it gives me a quick question saying, you sure you want to do this? Saying, proceed with reload, and the answer in brackets is confirm. If I press enter key right now, it's going to reload the router. As it turns out, I don't want to do that for our purposes here in lab. So if you just type in for no and press enter, the router believes that you don't want to reload the router and gives you a command prompt. Next, let's take a look at how to move to configuration mode. We're beginning here in enable mode, so by typing the configure terminal command, as you see here, you move into configuration mode. Now notice the command prompt changed. The word config is in parentheses before the pound sign, and that's a reminder that you're in configuration mode. Now just as a proof, we'll try the show IP route command that you see there, and press enter, and it tells you it doesn't know what that command is. Also, if we try the reload command, it's also not recognized because those are exec commands as opposed to being configuration commands. Now if we try a valid configuration command like the hostname command, let's try hostname Fred and press enter. Note that the hostname immediately changes to Fred and the command actually is accepted. For instance, look at the command prompt. The command prompt always begins with the hostname of the device and as soon as we press the enter key after the hostname Fred command, the router went ahead and reacted. So that's a nice reminder that when a router is configured, the router actually uses that configuration just as soon as you type it in. Now when you're tired of configuration mode, you can use the end command or control Z as I did there to get out of config mode. And if you want to see the actual configuration that's being used right now, you could use the show running config command as I've done here and see that output. In particular, if you look near the top, you'll see the hostname Fred command that we just configured. Well, that concludes lab number one. In this lab, you've seen how to use the iOS command line interface help features. You've heard a description of the differences between user, enable, and configuration modes, as well as between exec commands and configuration commands. You've also seen the commands that allow you to move between user mode, enable mode, and configuration mode.